So in the last video we found the two spherical harmonics and now we're going to check that both of these functions are indeed normalized. So let's focus on y0,0 first. So the, we need to check that this integral, so first of all we take the absolute value of square of this and the absolute value of square is just 1 over 4 pi. And then we're going to integrate this along the d theta and d phi differentials. And you, for spherical coordinates when you're integrating along uh, d theta and d phi, you need to attach the sine theta to it as well because you're integrating across the surface of the sphere. And then for the for the domain, theta goes from 0 to pi, while phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so this is the integral that we're going to have to deal with. So first of all, we can integrate out the d phi. There are no phi terms here, so we just get a 2 pi. And I can just pull this out. This is just a constant, 4 pi. And so in the end, we have an integral of sine theta from 0 to pi. So this is, of course, uh, 1 half. And then integrating this, we get negative cosine of theta. Evaluate it from 0 to pi. And then cosine pi is equal to negative 1, so we have negative of negative 1, which is positive 1. And then we minus negative of cosine 0. And cosine 0 is equal to 1, so we minus negative 1. So this is equal to 2 divided by 2, so of course it is equal to 1. And so there we have it. We have checked that this first function here is indeed normalized. And now we're going to do the same thing for this other function, y12. And so we do something similar. We have the double integral, and then we need to take the absolute value of square. When we take the absolute value of square, this term, uh, it goes away because the absolute value of square is just the conjugate multiplied by itself. And so you'll get something like this, which cancels out because the product of these two terms is equal to 1. So when you take the absolute value square of this, uh, the negative sign also goes away. So in the end, you have 15 over 8 pi. And then you have sine squared theta, cosine squared theta. And then you multiply the differentials, which is sine theta, d theta, d phi. And then once again, theta goes from 0 to pi. And then phi goes from 0 to 2 pi, which draws out the entire spherical shell. And so, uh, of course, we can pull this constant out. And then once again, we can integrate out the phi terms because there are no phi terms here, so we can integrate out the d phi. So we get 2 pi. So I'm integrating out this integral here. So in the end, on the inside, we have 0 to pi of sine to the power of 3 theta times cosine squared theta, d theta. So of course, this can cancel out. So we get 15 over 4. And then in order to solve this integral, this is rather simple. All we have to do is do uh, substitution. So I'm going to break up the term on the inside into something like this. So sine, I'm using the fact that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. And now I'm going, I can make the substitution of u being equal to cosine theta. So that means du d theta is equal to negative sine theta. And so that means this integral is going to be equal to the integral of, first of all, 1 minus u square, and then cosine squared theta, that's just u square again. And then d theta is just equal to, so d theta times sine theta is equal to negative du. So we have negative du. And then the bounds, first of all, they originally they went from 0 to pi. But now under this substitution, cosine 0 is equal to 1, and cosine pi is equal to negative 1. So we put a negative 1 here. And then because of this negative sign, I can take this away and then I can flip the, the order of the integrals from negative 1 to positive 1. And then you can see that this is a function that is symmetrical about the y-axis. So if you can imagine this is the u-axis, this is the y-axis. And then this is a function of y equal to u squared times 1 minus u squared. Uh, I don't care what this function looks like, all I know is that it's uh, symmetrical about the y-axis. And so that is why I can put a 2 over here and then change the bounds to go from 0 to 1 instead. So it's slightly simpler when, you, when you're when you dealing with a 0. So that's why I'm doing this. So of course you don't have to do this. You can also integrate it and then evaluate it at negative 1 and positive 1. So it's also perfectly fine. So now we have to integrate this, which is u to the power of 3 over 3 minus u to the power of 5 over 5. Evaluate it from 0 to 1. So when you substitute 1, you have 1 third minus 1 fifth. And then when you substitute 0, everything is just 0, so we kind of ignore this second term. And then you can just do your basic fractions, uh, 5 minus 3 over 15. So 15 cancels out, this is just 2, which cancels out. So in the end, you get 1, which is exactly what we were expecting.